My name is terroir, chocolate. And terroir is a French word that describes the taste of place. So, the, how the region influences the flavor of the plant. I really like chocolate, but um, two years ago, if you told me that I was going to be making chocolate, um, I would have thought you were crazy. And in fact, as I look back, I realize how little I knew as far as where it comes from. And I think I was probably one of those people, and I think there's a lot of them, that we love chocolate, we eat chocolate, and we maybe don't know anything about it, where it comes from, or anything like that. And so it's been a fun process to learn and we feel like we're just at the beginning of, of our learning process. Kristen and I got married two years ago and um, we honeymooned in Napa, California. And the first time we saw how wine was made and we saw the impact that the land could have on the flavor in our food. And right after that we toured a chocolate factory in San Francisco and Kristen tasted a bar that was made in Madagascar and it was really citrus fruity and then she tasted another one and it had no fruit tones whatsoever it was kind of a nutty almost an earthy taste and she walked out of the door and she was so excited and she essentially said that's what she wanted to do so that's how we got started and it seems like from that day in San Francisco until today, with Kristen and I, it comes up in our conversations almost like this pulling or compelling. And it started when we got back home and we started looking online and buying books and watching videos and trying to learn as much as we could. And um, the cacao plant grows in the understory of tropical climate. The pods grow on the trunk of the tree, actually. And they're about the size of a football, and they have 50 cacao beans in each pod. Um, they're surrounded by a pulpy fruit that is really tasty. The different agriculture that's grown around the cacao tree will affect the flavor of the final cacao beans and um, the elevation and the what's in the soil, the different minerals. Another really important flavor development that's just beginning is the fermentation process and there are some people out there that are really skilled in the fermentation and learning about what types of flavors they're creating. So that is an industry that's just starting to create really quality cacao for small makers like Josh and I. So there's a challenge in each bar and each time we get to try the final product it's kind of just this wow moment and that keeps me inspired. So when we started to learn about this process and kind of this revolution and movement that's happening, uh, we pulled up a map and we looked at Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, and we saw there was this nice territory where nobody was doing this yet. We started our company in Fergus Falls because both Josh and I are, were born here and they're also a very supportive community of the arts and of entrepreneurship. So everything just fell into place and we didn't come into any barriers. It felt like we were supposed to be here. We start with the 150 pound bag of raw cacao. We put it through a fourth generation fanning mill and that separates the size of each cocoa bean so that we can roast them in consistent sizes. From there we hand sort just to make sure that we've taken out any other impediments that happen to be in there from shipping. After hand sorting then 
I hand I roast in a convection oven the cacao beans and each origin takes a different amount of time. The roast is important because there's some acidic flavors being released during the roast. You have to taste it continually while roasting so that you can take it out at the flavor that you want to highlight. So then we have a gravity table that we dump 40, 50 pounds of husk and nib together on and it shakes the nibs up to one side and the husks to the other. And then we take the cocoa nibs and we put them in stone grinders and let that liquefy. And during that three day to seven day process, we taste and decide when we want to add the sugar or additional cocoa butter. After we deem it ready to take out of the conch, we then put it in a tempering machine, which is a process that it warms and cools the chocolate so the crystals can align so that you can achieve the, the sheen and the nice snap that you find in chocolate bars. and then you hand wrap the chocolate bar. Our journey's been interesting because when we seem to lay out a path of how we think it's gonna go, it doesn't go that way. And I'll make goals and I'll say, we well, hope to be um, in our new factory by this date. And it just doesn't happen. Um, but then six months later or a year later, you look back and you can't believe how far you got. So for us, I think the key has been a community that cares and people that see what you're trying to do and they come on board and they, they really want to help with it. And we've been benefactors of that and we wouldn't be here without that. I'm going to speak for Kristen here and say that She's maybe not trying to make the best chocolate in the world or, or anything like that, but she's trying to make really good chocolate, the best that she can out of the beans that we're able to find. And even more importantly than that, I think she's trying to point out that there's really good chocolate out there to be tasted and to give that experience to people and to be able to connect people to where it came from and what makes chocolate special and so my encouragement would be that there's something to be tasted there. And whether it's ours or some other chocolate maker, try it and keep an open mind and see what you think. There's so much uh, mystery and flavor in the different origins. I would have never known that chocolate could taste so different from Madagascar versus Belize versus Ecuador. And the larger chocolate makers, they have a set formula and it's going to taste the same each time you have it. With the bean de bar, it's more of an adventure each bar you get to try. It's, you don't know what it's going to taste like necessarily. There's just so much to learn and I'll be the rest of my life I could do this and be content.